have you ever seen a nigga like uh, A little strange, but I hit it right Nigga stretching, I just stretch my ears Snort the powder and arrest my fears Play, play, playing dirty like I'm Bill and Beer I'm a bad boy filled with Biggie Spears Is this your king? He ain't marvelous I got hella scars, see me shake his fears I see you and think you so Apollo And I'm like, damn seared, I'm so damn rare Say your name shit, put her hands there Put her head here Hello, y'all. I be the chillest guy, stepping off my throne to come and get applause. I be kicking, flipping hella bars like a black belt in hip hop or martial arts. God damn it, we are back in the motherfucking place to be. It is the Sub Sub Podcast. We are back live in the studio, motherfucker. We are off quarantine, not really, uh, but we are here. We are live again. I am your host that does the absolute motherfucking most. A low boot in the building. How we stacks is here. Camera crew is here. We got better cameras. We got microphones. Uh, we uh, we looted some shit to make this motherfucking podcast <laughs> happen. But don't worry about all that. Just be happy with the content and the quality of it. We are back again today, uh, coming live from our studio, uh, my home, which is your home, for an hour and some change every week. Uh, we do appreciate y'all for being back here again. Uh, what the fuck has been going on, bro? I mean, man, shit. a lot of shit, boy. God like, damn. Hey, look, we made it though. We here. Like, hey, happy, nope. happy Juneteenth. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We late to the punch, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we on that. We on that. Happy on Juneteenth. That. Happy Father's Day. Oh yeah. Make sure we open up that today too. because it is the Father's Day episode of the Some Some Podcast. While all the dads is out there uh, acting like dads when they really not. I just saw a motherfucking uh, post. Uh, the goddamn barber shops and shit. It's full of a whole bunch of deadbeat niggas trying to look good, and the real father's not actually uh, able to get their hair cut because all the deadbeats in there trying to look nice for the day. Like, you only gonna see that nigga today. Like, that's it. Like, you know, you gonna come pick your son up and put his ass right back down and then go back outside. <laughs> uh, pop up get, like Jesse Jackson get, and shit. Yeah. I am, so I'm back. We gotta get a 40. <laughs> <laughs> a 40 ounce and a bottle of Let me you said, I am time. somebody. I'm yeah. going home now, though. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we do wanna thank all the fathers. Uh, that are out there that are doing your job and that, you know, I mean, shit, that's, man, being great dads. Like, you know, today is all about uh, showing love to the to the real man. But today is uh, it's a funny day, too, because with that, it's also slight a nigga day. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For all the, like, non- Good dads or perceived to be non good dads. All the niggas that's hoping they not dads, you know. Yeah, that's true. It's a lot of it's a lot of ish in between. So like and, and you know, and, and Mother's Day never gets this fucking flack. All right. I just wanna put that on the record that Mother's Day. Yeah, does don't nobody not... ever say like, hey, you know, I just wanna shout out to my father because my mother wasn't never there, you know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out to my father for being my mother and my father. Yeah, don't nobody like, say that shit. Don't nobody say that shit at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like That why... would be funny, I I might say it on Mother's Day. That, that shit would be hilarious. I'm actually but it's say not it. true, so I can't say it. I'm so. going to say it for no reason, even though my mom and my dad was both around for the most part. Like, you know, like, I I just think that shit's hilarious. Like, y'all get slighted. Y'all don't get slighted on y'all day. But us dads, you know, we get we get all the slight and shit like that. Dad, like, we have to be slight. extra good parents in order for us to make sure that we're seen as good parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to go over the top as a father. I feel like that's one of the plights. Even though moms have to push them eight pounds out of, out of their vagina. Outside of that, like, yeah. that's it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all ain't doing shit else, you know? Like, what the fuck? Off having you know? Beat, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> y'all started it off, like, tough, but after that, it's like, yo, like, protection. Like, I gotta die for you niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody's expecting you to jump in front of a bullet. Yeah, but mothers would, though. I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, animal, like, listen, animal mothers, you know, they do a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they, they go, they, they protect their kids. To, to the end, like they will die for that shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, so excuse me. Oh, I didn't even realize you said that. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Be the father, man, it comes with shit like that. Get out of here. Bye. Leave. Upstairs. I let someone share the laptop. Go upstairs. I'm working. Bye. <laughs> gotta take it from them. See what I'm saying? You know, like, yeah, mamas don't have to deal with shit like that. You know what I'm saying? I got a fucking, uh, uh, I gotta be Don King in the house all the fucking time, hosting <laughs> fights and shit in the back room because these motherfuckers can't get along with each other. Like, mama don't have to deal with this shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but shout out to all the great fathers out there that are doing their thing. Shout out to the deadbeats too, because listen, man, it was a lot of work putting in getting the kid. You know, you just didn't finish the job. So I get it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it fucks you all up in the head. And then the mothers today, 
let us have our day. You know, even for the dads that, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just let them have their day. All right. They only get one day out of the year. You can give them this day. The rest of the day, they ain't shit. And that's fine. Like, there's no real big, you know, deal about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't fucking throw all the hoopla. Uh, and, and a lot of other fucking crazy ass news that's happening this mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. We do want to mm -hmm. make sure that uh, we uh, highlight everything that's been going on. We've been off for a couple weeks. So, you know, <laughs> it's been a lot of crazy shit that's been happening. Uh, but before we get into that. Uh, again, like I say every week for my somebodies, uh, I appreciate you. We thank you. We want to make sure that we can keep delivering you guys this great content. And without you, we wouldn't have all this nice ass shit that we looted from, I mean, <clears throat> that we got, uh, now to shoot with. So thank you again. We do appreciate y'all for liking, subscribing, and commenting on the videos. Uh, we want to make sure that we constantly bring you great content and great quality of content, which is what it seems to be. Uh, happening we're moving in that right direction so thank you again please again like subscribe and comment it, it, hey listen we or wanna, share and share whatever you want to do just I mean, interact with that shit i said even thumbs down the motherfucker if you don't like it, it now, don't, we haven't got a thumbs down yet i'm starting to get worried i got six on my video i was like Bitch. yeah well, how well, do i see who did this? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mel. <laughs> Fuck you and your kids. I hope you die, bitch ass nigga. Fuck you, bitch ass nigga. Like, this fucking bots and shit. They got like two <laughs> followers. Like, yo, yeah, leave the motherfucker alone, bro. bro. It's not that deep. Like, you know what? I fuck with this, so I'm just gonna give it a thumbs down. It I'm makes not, me worry, though. But here's down. the thing. What, what is, like, I've been telling our producers, and like, I've been telling you, like, if we don't get any, like, bad, like, interactions, then like, it don't looks like. It looks like we fake it, honestly. And I don't yeah. feel like we're doing our job. I don't feel like I'm pissing people off enough. Well, how many uh, F bombs do I have to drop on this damn thing? To get it out? I don't know, motherfucker. <laughs> how many God times? God damn it, son of a to, bitch. How many times do I have to racially and, and, and oppress people <laughs> and, and racially profile you niggas before you stop liking me? I want a thumbs down. I want you niggas to hate me, son, because hate is love. And that's how I received it all my life. No, I'm just joking. Man. Listen, I want everybody to do what you feel and do what's real. If you don't like it, let us know too, man. We 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 want to we want to act like we give a fuck. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna act like we give a fuck if they give us a thumbs down. You know what I'm saying? So be like, oh y'all niggas hating on us. I want to say that. I want to say y'all hate, but you're not. Y'all too nice. Thank you, somebody. We appreciate the love. <laughs> <laughs> In other news. Ugh. Um. So, a long you, weekend of looting. Yeah, a lot of fucking long weekend of stealing shit. Um, I came up on a couple different things during the protests and the riots. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh my god! Hey, I'm not gonna lie to you. I came up on a couple you things. You ain't right. No, no but listen. You got, I, I was playing. I, I came up on a couple things. All right. Now, am I proud of it? No. But am I a nigga to pass up a deal? Of course not. Like. Who the fuck in their right mind is going to pass up $99 joggers for $20? Like, what the fuck? No, I'm not fucking passing that shit up. Hey, I just had to get the security tag off That's there, the difference which, between me you know, and you. I see what you're saying, but I wouldn't say it. You feel me? So you know what I'm I talking mean, about. I mean, listen, they got to prove it. They got to prove that I stole it. Like, damn, you got a lot of Nike suits. Yeah, shit, I, I, I mean, love Nike, nigga. I love Nike, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got to prove which one it is. I got a lot of joggers. Like, you know, I've been in my bag. You know? <laughs> They gonna find the picture that I posted on Instagram with the stolen shit. Like, yeah, you can be motherfucker. They came from my store. Like, I know that they came from my store because it's my tag on it. And I haven't sold none of those. Like, they gonna fucking get my ass. I know. But listen, at the end of the day, I, 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 I was, I was. I was thrilled. Oh, shit. I was thrilled to find out like how much shit like got took that happened to just come through my neighborhood, nigga. Shit, like I was like, goddamn. I seen y'all niggas running out the store on Channel 7, and then that same as that shit for a store it happened to be on my block. Like, it was crazy. Like, they niggas outside like a fucking yard sale. I was like, I gotta not pass this deal up. You know? How can I not? How can I not? Yeah, I was just like, what the fuck? You know what I'm that saying? Funny In other funny. news. Um, so, um, over, I think it was about maybe a week or so ago, um, the B. Simone mm. situation. Mm. Are you familiar with a couple of things? She had a couple of different things. It started things with the interview, right? Right. So I think it started with the interview with mm -hmm. Nick Cannon. She had an interview with Nick Cannon about uh, it was about a week ago or so. I want to say oh, it's been a couple weeks. Two. It's been about two weeks. It's been about two weeks. We've been off, man. Listen, we've been fucked up in the head. I forgot what episode this was. I didn't even quote the episode because I, I know I was gonna get it wrong. Uh, she like fifteen. Yeah, it's probably higher than that. Sixteen. Yeah, we are somewhere. 
<laughs> we up there somewhere. 17? We up there somewhere, motherfucker. <laughs> Nick Cannon, B. Simone. Uh, Nick Cannon um, had a like podcast like interview uh, thing, virtual like interview that he did with B. Simone. Um, interview was seeming going well. Nick Cannon asked the question about what type of guys that B. Simone would like to date, right? So if you guys don't know who B. Simone is, she's a entrepreneurial uh, Instagram. Uh, you know, she acts, she she sings, she does comedy, she makes funny videos, she has a book. Apparently, we'll get into that in a second. Um, of you know, just a whole. She just does. She's you know influencer. She does a lot of different things. She sells clothes, all type of stuff, right? Uh, so she's an entrepreneur in a sense, right? She doesn't work a regular nine to five. Nick Cannon asked her. What type of guy she like? She said, entrepreneurial type of guys. Like she wants a guy that you know is like you know on the grind. She he can leave when he wants. He can move around when he wants. He makes that type of money. You know what I'm saying? Um, and she, Nick Cannon, basically was like, "Can you date a dude that works a nine to five? She was like, "No, I can't date a dude that works a nine to five. And fucking Instagram and Twitter went in a frenzy about Hilarious. that shit. Like they went up. Now. That Donald Duck meme was funny as hell. With, <laughs> you know, the angry Donald Duck and it was like, yeah, uh, I'll be Simone's boyfriend working at 9 to 5. Yeah, oh, yeah. Trying to go to sleep while she... <laughs> while, she while she answering emails at 3 a.m. <laughs> and it's like Donald Duck like looking in the bed like, motherfucker. Was funny. Listen, I, for me, I, I, I'm conflicted about the 9 to 5 situation. And here's why, for me. Because I feel like I get what she's saying. If you are somebody who's an entrepreneur, you want to be with somebody of like mind yeah. as you and somebody that can understand your lifestyle. Somebody that is really able to kind of move when you move. You know what I'm saying? If you're working a nine to five every week and she's traveling, doing all this other shit and having all this fun, it's like it causes contention. Maybe some envy will happen in there. Chances are she's probably making more money than you. It's not to say that all people that make nine to five that have nine to fives don't make a lot of money. But I personally believe that it'll be very difficult for you to kind of get a grasp of that lifestyle if you're just constantly working all the time. Mm -hmm. So somebody who does that, I can see why she has a type. She's She wants to be out and, you know, kind of be free and like, you know, lollygagging and shit, you know, you know, writing fake books on the beach <laughs> type shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, like, we're going to get to the book in a minute. But I, I want to deal with the nine to five thing first. Do you see where she's coming from with that? Or is it like... Look. The only the, the, what forces me to care is being on the podcast, but I personally don't think it's that big a fucking deal. <laughs> it was like, oh man, she crazy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They was like going in on her ass, yeah. bro. They went in on her ass, like they went in on her ass, and I was just like, who gives a shit? Okay? Yeah, because it makes no, sense. It makes perfect fucking they, sense. They like, went, they went, they went super hard on her for that, and I did not agree with it at all because I completely understand where she was coming from, yeah. and I and, and I. I posted something on Facebook. I was like, listen. The schedules it's a, are just going to be tough. It's a mindset, though. Here's the thing. The like, type of person might not, they might not click. People that have nine to fives, you can't blame them for having a nine to five, right? Because that's what we've been trained to do. But it is a mindset. Eventually, at some point, people have to get out of the nine to five mindset. And then, because when people say, hey, man, I'm going to this dead end ass job. And they hate their job and they hate their life. It's chances are it's because... You don't have a lot of other things that are going on. It's not to say you can't hate your job, you can't be miserable at that job, or you could love that job, right? And, and be extremely happy. Again, nah, it's all mindset. Niggas. But it's all a mindset, is what I'm saying. It's yeah. like she wants somebody that doesn't have the mindset to, to, to have a nine to five. And then what people were saying was like, well, you had a nine to five, you were sleeping on the couch three years ago. Okay, that was three years ago. She manifested herself into a better lifestyle the shade you know what i'm saying oh, I'm, listen i'm getting to the shade i'm just i want to build the shade up the shade. To that part because there is another part i don't fuck oh with my God. and i'm a fan of hers right and i and i hope and be small i would hope at some point in time you would see this uh you probably won't but if you happen to ever come across this video at any point in time i want you to know that you are a black woman who put yourself in a better position and you should never feel bad about having a type or anything like that at all because a lot of those motherfuckers that were hate were mad at you, they were only mad at you because they probably have a yeah, 9 to they, 5 and they, and they hate you. They ain't even working on 9 niggas, to 5. Them bitches working 3 to 11 or 11 yeah, to yeah, 7. But none of the entrepreneurial niggas that ain't, that ain't mad. even a like, 9 to 5. Like, hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, you, you want a nigga that, that probably got the bag and that's out here working a fucking, you know, that's out here moving and grooving when they want to. Yeah, I really, I'm going to be 100. I don't even know why y'all made such a fucking big deal about that shit. I really don't understand it. And I really didn't care that much. I, 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 wholeheartedly agree to her. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I, I don't really didn't. care if I'm her type of nigga or not. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm somebody type of nigga, you feel me? So, like, I don't know why y'all be caring so much about, like, 
Because their like egos that, be hurt. Bro, yeah, like, your fucking egos be hurt. Like, bro. let the woman like what she want to like, bro. I mean, don't even let her. Like, she going to like what the fuck she want to like regardless. So, I don't see why you have to have an opinion it was a, about it. It was an ego <laughs> thing. I feel like they, they people were hurt by what it is that she said because they don't have the aspirations. Or they don't even have the idea of what... She was even saying it all. Yeah, she's saying nine to five. She's not saying you, as in like you working nine to five. And because everybody got to make money, everybody got to work. Somehow, right. It's the like, mentality. It's all it is. If, if you, she probably wouldn't care working, living, or being with somebody that worked at nine to five if they were doing a whole bunch of other shit on the side, and that that nine to five could be that nine to five was nothing. That's that's twenty percent or thirty percent of their income or whatever. Like they can let that go at any moment, but they working it because they like that job or whatever the case. It, she she was talking about the mindset more or less than she was talking about actually working nine to five. You know what I'm saying? Like, but people didn't see it that way. At least that's the way I perceived it. Now she probably she may have been saying just niggas that work nine to five period, but I think she was talking about a mindset. Nine to five is more of a mindset than it is in fact an actual time of day that you're working. That's my personal take on that. So that's how I looked at it. So jumping along to more Be Simone news, um, which is why I feel like she is a little bit under attack because of that. And it opened up a fucking floodgate, right? So people started to look into Be Simone a little bit more. And what the fuck are you doing, right? So you this special person, right? You know, you, you shitting on nine to five niggas. What the fuck are you doing that, that makes you so special that you can't date a nigga that works a nine to five? Well, she's got a book out. And the book is a manifestation book, apparently to help and better your life, manifesting and things like that. She has been uh, 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 marketing this book for some time now. Um, and, you know, it's all over. It, apparently it sold well. You know, she was selling it. I don't know where she was selling it on or what platform. I mean, obviously her Instagram and, and other links to, to buying the book. Um, I don't know if it's in like Barnes and Noble or anything like that. I think it, it, Basically, the book got blasted for a number of reasons. The first reason it got blasted, I don't know if you're familiar with mm -hmm. the situation that the book um it looked like my five-year-old daughter could make the book all right it looked it, it looked janky you know <laughs> people were going in on the book a lot of the pages were were, were just pictures of her and her family <laughs> you know and a lot of other shit and it was supposed to be like a self-help book right it's supposed to like uplift you and, and like help you like you know revitalize whatever you know a uh, a uh, 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 plans that you have inside of you or dreams that you want or goals that you have it's supposed to kind of do that whole thing right yeah. you know but the book looked it, yeah it looked a little cheap but i mean it's a girl's first book you know she's just <laughs> trying some shit there's no reason to attack her for that right until we find out that the book was plagiarized yeah apparently b simone's team not her her team yeah. put together a book of stolen of material somebody else's book. of somebody else's book that they had put out put years together prior. a compilation of somebody else's work which for those of you that have attended college is a cardinal sin yeah, extremely it's a cardinal sin because if you're going to do it you have to make sure you put it on a specific website and run your paper through it so you know, that way the teacher can't just, find out or or you just don't do it at all they should have put that bitch on turnitin.com yeah there you go yeah and they didn't and apparently not only was the book plagiarized, it was like the cat runs fast, the cat runs fast. Like it was exactly word for word. And the font was the same. The font and the color. It was the same fucking That's thing. Crazy. How did how did how does this happen, right? She goes on well, Instagram. Yeah, I saw the video she explained you herself. Seen it? Yeah, she said like, you know, that it, she didn't know about it. She trusted oh. the team and they kinda did it without her doing like knowledge but she's gonna take responsibility and fix it you uh -huh. know like it, it's how, a shitty situation it, for her it's a shitty situation for a number of reasons number one how the fuck do you have a book that you didn't read i mean she didn't know none of the shit was in the book hey i'm gonna be honest with you she didn't know none of the shit was in the book there's a lot of niggas man that i swear to god they don't know what the fuck like for example gucci that nigga wrote a book mm -hmm. with help though but it's his life. He knows the story. Okay, so if I give, so that's like if I sell my story yeah, to Hollywood and Hollywood embellishes it in a sense to make it better. It's essentially the same thing, right? Now, I didn't know they were going to put that in the movie or the book, but it's, it's, it's not, it's not plagiarism. They're not stealing something. They, they took my story and then they made it a little bit spicy. Yeah, but all, I'm just making the case that a lot of people have written books with like, it's like they put the, the name on it, but it's somebody else. Right. 
I, and I get that. That happens a lot, though. Like, that, that's commonplace. But for to you to get a team, and then that team rips off somebody completely, it wasn't your words. It wasn't like you sat down and said, okay, number one through 30, because this is what was in the book, apparently. One through 30, all right, uh, um, go to sleep at 10 o'clock every night, right? Or uh, make sure you eat green vegetables, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. Like, you know, if, if that's something that you're writing in a book, and you take that's supposed to be your way of telling other people how to manifest their dreams and shit like that. Mm -hmm. You can't take that from somebody else because at that point now, what you're telling me is is how to manifest a book. That means all I have to do now is take some shit from you, and that's how I can manifest my dreams because that's basically what you're telling me to do. But I get what you was trying to go with. Listen, B Simone, we love you. We appreciate. I wouldn't what even you do. apologize. I'd have just posted ten thousand cash. <laughs> <Why? Exactly. laughs> like, I need I, a new bitch. I, I can't hear. What you say about my book? I can't hear you through all I this. I can't money. hear you, niggas. You're too quiet. My money too loud, nigga. I, that's what I would have did, be some more. Hey, but that's just me. You know? I'd have been. I, my I caption would have been like, I don't got your shit. My caption, know? my caption would have been with big ass money phones. Like, but you bought it though. Yeah. That would have been my caption on this. <laughs> J. Cole and oh, man. man. It, it, yeah, there's a lot of frustrating news. I want to hear your opinion on this one because again, this is I have to refer to the musical <laughs> nigga on 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 the on the show because he understands that type of like interim with music and like how words can be, you know, especially in music, right? So like he just like everybody else, um, they typically go to what they know best to express themselves. So J. Cole put out a song mm -hmm. expressing himself mm -hmm. in song, which is what most people do. Like, he, he, in the song, you know, he basically says, like, look, I'm not that smart. You guys put all this weight on me because of my, my ability to put words together in song. But in reality, there are a lot other better, there are a lot more people out there that are more equipped to fight this fight in a better way. And she's one of them. So what's the problem can you explain like i won't even get into it deep i want to hear exactly what you have to say okay, about it so I, what's the what's the, what i think I don't the, get it. the perceived problem within the internet community is uh tone policing which became which turned into a like here black men are again to tell us how to say what we have to say okay now completely get that i think that's a, i think it, the, i look i think it's a fucking stretch I, for, personally, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I seen the whole thing, I fucking ignored it. Like I seen a whole like people who's letting tweets fly about Kendrick, a bunch of people, a bunch of niggas who have protested way more than me. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, like I feel like y'all just a bunch of ungrateful ass niggas. Like nothing's ever good enough for you niggas. And the albums are never good enough for you niggas. The work that people put in is never good enough for you niggas. Like niggas go to court for you niggas, and and you still fucking go on Twitter and complain about it. And I'm not mm -hmm. directing that at no name at all. I'm just saying like. People in general, like, they just fucking just, it's like, Ugh! like, dude, what the fuck, bro? You always got something to say. You always got something to say. You always got something it's to say. It's Nothing's never ever good enough. enough. And, and you talking from your motherfucking keyboard. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people on Facebook. I'm happy. I'm happy that everybody's on the same page. But some of y'all on the same web page. And the yeah. rest of us get off that web page and go out and, live, and do and, things and, and, and live life and try to and try to live our and try to walk the walk, bro. And like a lot of these niggas, don't, they they at home with their family. You know what I'm saying? Like, God damn it, this motherfucker didn't go out and protest one more time. Like, dude, I, Jay Cole's been protesting for like ten years, nigga. Like, get off the man. Like, he, he got irritated about some shit, made a song about it, and then he he like did it in a very like lukewarm nice ass way the it wasn't only, even like the only way that j cole could actually do it like you know what i'm saying or anybody with some respect and decency could go about doing something like that by expressing yeah. it. like how can you be mad at somebody for expressing themselves like sometimes you got to pick your battles with shit bro like mm -hmm. i'm you put in no name with j cole like for what for what I felt like it was two educated people having a dialogue with each other and expressing yeah. how they felt, regardless and with of a bunch what. of ignorant ass motherfuckers watching on the side. Yeah, because like, what other than him saying "watch your tone," which he didn't even say "watch your tone," he said, "I felt some type of way about your tone." Like that's what he said. It wasn't like, "Hey, yo, bitch, you too loud." Like, shut the fuck up and calm down. Like, 
He ain't yeah. even say like. Hey, that shit hot. Let's make a song. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like going back and forth type shit. So like, for me, it's like J. Cole of all people what? expressed himself okay. expressed himself in a way where he was coming off as nice as he possibly could. So that to me, that to me is like I mean, like, how can you get any better than that? J. Cole is the person that you can rely on to not be disrespectful and to express how he feels in the most nice way. If you're going to get mad and try to cancel J. Cole, I don't even like even mentioning cancel anything ever, ever. Don't fucking like it. I don't even want to talk about anybody potentially being canceled because that shit doesn't even exist. So the reality is... The, the the reality the reality is is that the reality is is that what changed from those yeah, stuff? I know, right? From what that stuff to so there? Yeah, she, realized, she realized her mama was leaving, and that's what it was. She was like, oh hell no! no, no right? You're not she leaving said, me. She said, "Bye, daddy." <laughs> uh, the reality is is that if you can't handle J Cole, if you can't handle J Cole expressing himself in that type of way then it's like, I don't know if it's oversensitivity or maybe I'm not realizing that women deserve to be sensitive at a time when they don't feel protected from black men. But I also don't feel like what he said was not in a protective manner for her because every other line after that was, you're a queen, you're more equipped, I want to learn from you, I'm not too, I'm not too big on it. Like he said that all of that, that in the song. That opened a whole nother goddamn. Y'all giving me a headache. Oh yeah, the yeah, fuck, queen about. is the new bitch. So if I call, so what? so it's bitch in the head rap. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was basically. So I basically, I can't thing. even call. I've been saying it a lot, and I have not been saying it in a, in a sarcastic or derogatory manner at all. Like if I said queen, I am trying to. It's a term of endearment. Hey, I, I, I say bitch up. with the utmost respect. I would never get the sponsorship. Nah. <laughs> You just, catch, you just throw that shit out the window. I'll tell you right now. I don't give a fuck. But if but, somebody calls you a queen and they mean that shit, don't fucking take that no, and look. spin it and try to act as if like they're trying to call you something that's... Like, I, and people forget we humans. I, like yeah. they, Sometimes they fucking look... They, you get on the internet and you forget that you're a human being. You forget that you actually have to interact with people. And that's why I joke about that shit. I put up a status. I'm a, I ain't heard of nothing about the Illuminati. Y'all, Y'all left the house? Because niggas be in the crib just thinking. Especially with quarantine. Everybody was in the crib like... Oh my God, the lizards is taking over, G. The motherfucking viruses was released from motherfucking China, nigga. Like, oh my God, like, oh my God, bro. Like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> shut up. Fuck. It's stupid. It's fucking stupid. stupid. Like, stop being so, like, I, and I don't want to say retarded. I'm trying to be politically correct, but I can't. Stop it. Stop it. And No Name had every right to say what they <laughs> You went straight Trump on these niggas, bro. And, and, then, he, and then he explained it. And my president can do it. Like, and and I, then he explained it. Honestly, I think it's his fault that we at this point, <laughs> at, at, in this predicament. How's J. Cole and No Name Trump? So it, no, we could, really trust because me. if we wasn't stupid enough already, we got we went and found the dumbest nigga to run the country, and now everyone's doing stupid shit, you know damn well you shouldn't be fucking doing. You know it. And women aren't excluded, okay? Women are not excluded. Americans are generally stupid. I won't lie to you. They're high, and it's not our fault. They're hiding shit from you. You have to be proactive with your education. That's why I get on this motherfucking shit. Yeah. Fuck. It pisses me off. We're like 17th most educated. But uh, if you listen to us, we are like the, the number higher than one, nigga. Yeah, listen to us. We, we, we're we not thing, smart. We're the best thing since sliced bread. Like, listening to us. We are not smart because we have we don't even know that there's so much information in front of us that we ignore the truth. And focus on the lie, because the lie is a little more tasty. Yeah. Okay? With that being said, no name. Like, she didn't do nothing wrong. She had no, like, she she just, that's how she felt. That's how she felt. She said she didn't even name no names. Speaking you instigated this Nicky, whole shit. It was figured with J. Cole. J. Cole put a And then J. Out. Cole, dumbass, got online like, man, maybe she is talking about me. You know what he I mean? He said it in the song, though. But the like, song's like, like, away. He was like, I did. He was like, I was, he was like yo, <laughs> like, you have a big platform. Like, Women like, leave me you. alone. That's really what he was saying. Like, leave me alone. Like, focus this energy somewhere else. And then, and then niggas was still like, like, that. Like, leave me alone. That's how, that's, you, that's what how, do you bro. want from me? No way. <laughs> that's how I felt like, what uh, more do you like, want? Jay was just like, <laughs> yo, I, like, I, I 
hear everything you're saying. Look, man, I, get it. I just didn't think it was that big a deal. I think other people turn into a big deal because, like, and I don't, and I hate how everything turns into like this huge man woman battle. And I understand women are hurting right now, and I understand black women. Black women specific. Right black. I'm, I'm, here's my thing though. Black women <laughs> have had a history of not being protected and not feeling. And, yes. and I'm saying, and yes, it, that it is actually go, amazing. And I problem. get where that pain comes from, right? But we could we could be on this fucking podcast all day talking about where that comes from where that where that pain comes from if you want to discuss it being from the fathers being taken out of the home or the feminist movement or or whatever like you we can go all day long and try to pick and piece where it comes from all i know is that right now the thing was was that the 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 story is, is like listen black black men feel attacked in this society black women feel unprotected in this society we should listen to each other, give ourselves the opportunity to try to make it right and try to try to do it the best that we can to, to, to overcome those feelings that each one of us feel. Now, the black women, here's the thing, though. We can probably handle the, and this is where I, I kind of lean more to the side with the women on this one. I know it's very odd, right? But we can probably handle the black woman feeling less unprotected more than they can handle us being unprotected in society like their thing is more or less protecting us from from us like you know that girl that got murdered um the activist the young teenager mm-hmm. girl that got killed yeah. by the guy I just randomly i, I still don't hear all about the story Lord told you, right? and, yeah like and it was and that dude was black too he's a black guy so she's out here fighting she was like and, 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 and he, murdered, and she dies. Like, so that's the kind of the epitome of of of, of what this is all about right do we <laughs> do we speak our mind and see how we feel in a moment like this and, and, and where where black women are not are being ostracized, they're not being listened to. And only thing they're looking for is protection from us. They know about the shit that's happening in their workplace and in the systemic racism and things like that. But they're looking at it from like, look, all that shit don't matter. We just want y'all to just be there for us. But at a time where we feel attacked, we're like, listen, we want to protect you. But right now, it's kind of like we're kind of getting our heads knocked off too, so it's kind of like a battle. We're fighting a constant battle as a black man, so it's like the plight of the we're black man. Team. Believe me, is and we're our team, and we need we're a team. We, black we, we need to act more like a team. We need to talk more, and like we we all we separate. We always separate. It's always men versus women. It's yeah. always men versus women. I feel like the feminist movement started that shit. I <laughs> like, feel like taking the fathers out the home in the late fifties and early sixties started that shit. I do not believe that in our reality that that was ever the case for a very long period of time we had no choice but to stick together especially after slavery and post reconstruction i believe that we had no choice but to be together the black man and the black woman had 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 instrumental roles that we both needed each other for in order for us to maintain ourselves and in, 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 in thrive in society like that's my personal opinion like that's how i, I mean it's not even an opinion it's backed up by facts too like there's a lot of facts to prove that but today it's like Fuck you! I don't need a nigga. I, I can do shit on my own. That's then a third, and then and now it comes into shit like this. So it, it kind of has cycled itself, like to the point where we got here. Yeah. <laughs> so now that we're here, you know what I'm saying? It's like how do we handle? You know, like how do we how do we go about moving forward? Like what problem do we solve first? I feel like that's a lot of. I know as here. a man, I think the problem. I, I think the problem with men is that like, like men don't always have like they don't have like mentors and shit like that because yeah, be a lot of these, a lot of these niggas man. behavior i'm just like why bro like but then i look at my own life and i'm like to be honest like like having a solid male figure in your life like i don't think i really had that until i was like in college because mm. my daddy a pussy and i say i hope he sees this pussy ass yeah, nigga and motherfucking, uh, you know, <laughs> on Father's Day, man. And like, uh, you know, the 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 there was not really no man around my mama like that. She just wasn't on that. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, I'm not like lifting up on a pedestal. Just she, she was on some other shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like. <clears throat> and then even when there are men in your mama life, sometimes you be like, man, fuck this nigga. Mm-hmm. Fuck my mama, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, like baby boy ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, come here, little nigga. Like, you know, like it's not a good relationship. You know what I mean? Like, I think my first positive relationship with other black males was Alpha, bro. And that was in, like, 2011, nigga. Mm -hmm. And I'm fucking, I was born in 89. You see what I'm saying? So, like, we need to, like, what is it, reach one, teach one? They always say that shit. But, like, we actually need to be more proactive with each other, bro. Like, <clears throat> like I think that's what the problem is, because like I don't I don't know why these niggas are doing this shit. But I, feel like, like, I feel like it's out there for I mean for a lot of men to be honest. I feel like it's out there. I feel like 
I feel like it's out there. Like, though. Niggas like, be wild. I, as much as as much as I, as much as it's hard to say that for some people, they be like check it. your people. But like I know personally, Man, it's I don't have people that do this shit. I don't have people that do this shit. So like, but I'm like, if I saw this shit, I'd stop the shit up, nigga. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Like, like. Throwing a girl in the trash can, smacking her with a skateboard because yeah, she won't fuck you. Yeah, that that to me like that's like, just like seriously like, like and these are shit. fears that women have to deal with daily and like it's crazy because like back in the day and I know the attitudes. I'm glad the attitudes are finally changing because I know even back in the day sometimes the way we're both talking or today they like people would be like oh you y'all just doing this to get pussy nigga I have plenty of fucking sex I don't need to fucking alter my beliefs. To have to, to have sex, yeah, nigga. I had sex when I was toxic, and I had sex when I'm trying not to be toxic. It doesn't <laughs> fucking matter. <laughs> it was like I can get pussy in either in either form. Either, 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 the truth is, we do need to protect our women. We need to step up to the plate a little bit more. However, I seem to be around a lot of people that are doing that. So like, yeah. you know, it it like it like hurts my soul when I see this shit, bro. And then and that and it and when it comes back, coming back to like the J Cole no name thing, like personally. I think my straightforward opinion is like neither of them like they both felt how they felt. Neither of them really had to say what they said, but they felt convicted to say it, and they they're entitled to do that. And if you really like, you shouldn't just turn it into a black man yeah. versus black woman you beef. Like honestly, J Cole, I feel like he didn't have to say what he what he said, but he said it anyway. I feel like No Name didn't really have to say what she said, but she said it anyway. Like what? But but she didn't even say no name. So like what she said was general, and it wasn't a lie. It's true. Like. So people, there's a lot of people out here capping, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people out of here course, capping. Yeah, like, but like, but here's the thing: for her to call, and there are a lot of artists. For her to get mad, design. for her to get mad about him not call, not doing something, or, or calling somebody out, or not calling somebody out, or women getting mad, she did the exact same thing first. She started it. In all reality, she said something first. Now, could he have been bigger about it and not said nothing at all and kind of let it go? Yeah, he probably could have. But at yeah. the end of the day. He expressed it like, nah, I really felt like I needed to say something. Like, to be honest with you, this is how I really feel about that. So I'm going to express it in the only form I know how, and that's music. And comprehension is everything, women. So please, you have to sit back and, 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 and listen when a guy like Jake Hole, of all people, is expressing himself in a song, you know, to ch- explain to you, listen, I'm not the guy. Y'all made me be here, and I, and I took it on the road. I take it. But to be honest with you, there are a lot more... Better people, there are a lot better people out there that are more equipped to do this job than me and be on the front lines. But I'm going to still be here because I'm a black man that cares. So that's how I look at that shit. Um, yeah, it was like we could have just let it all. Yeah, so uh, uh, Juneteenth was just this past Friday. Uh, so um, for a lot of people that... I was big lit too, boy. Yeah, man, we had, we had a great... We had, most people had a great time Juneteenth. A lot of people celebrated their first Juneteenth this year. Uh, we almost started like 3 five. Man, like y'all dramatic, all the women. Ah, yeah, yeah it turned into like a on that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you didn't set uh, your house damn near on fire, uh, for the most part, Juneteenth turned out to be a pretty good um, event for us black folk that had never celebrated like that, who treated Fourth of July as our Independence Day. A day um, off, and, and exactly, which is now grill day. It's turned into a holiday essentially, for, uh, for a lot of different businesses, and hopefully federally we'll have this as a holiday. Uh, but what was captivating for me for Juneteenth that a lot of people do not know the history behind Juneteenth and don't understand uh, what Juneteenth really is. So for those who don't have any idea at all about Juneteenth, January I'll, give, 1st. I'll give us a quick breakdown okay, of it. Yeah, just, right. It's simple. Okay. Like, I mean, we don't have to even go into, into that deep. I was just going to give a quick timeline. The yeah. Emanci- Emancipation Proclamation, what was it? January 1st, 1863, right? Mm-hmm. Freed everybody. Now niggas didn't listen or necessarily know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they kept working our well, ancestors well, the a little war bit. Was still, the war was still going on. So the two years later had passed because the war was still being fought at that time, too. So a lot of people were Either on the side of the Confederacy so or they're on the side of the... you remember the name of the guy? Because it was a guy. He went to Texas and basically let everybody know, like, hey. It was an army, one of the army yeah. generals, right? Yeah, yeah I, I just forgot his name. name. Yeah. Well, he basically, basically... It was June 19, 1865. Yeah, we turned into a couple years after the fact that the Emancipation Proclamation got signed. People didn't know they were free, especially in Texas, where they were still trying to actually get uh, these niggas to work a little bit longer, like most jobs. Like my <laughs> job! 
Like, damn, nigga, you was off three hours ago. Like, whoa, you didn't tell me that. Like, you know what I'm saying? They, they went on for months, months and months. My job will let your ass show up. <laughs> and still let you work. And let you clock in. And then you and then you like, why am I the only one here? Yeah. You, nigga, oh, you just had to right. We're that. scheduled today, right? Yeah. I mean, scheduled is technically mandatory. because so sort of technicality. Nigga, shut yeah, up. Yeah, so, let me go home. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> so, that happened um, in June 19th was the day that, that he came along and he set all of the rest of the f- slaves that were not aware that they were free, that they were free. And they they partied, they, they they celebrated, they enjoyed themselves, and they went and got into a whole bunch more other shit after that. So um, it's kind of like weird for me because I still feel like a part of us still is not there. We're not free. I've seen a lot of shirts that said free ish. And that's kind of how I feel. I think uh, yeah. another, important, <laughs> another important part of, of Juneteenth is after Juneteenth was when, I think, what was it the 14th Amendment was ratified? By 13th. 13th? Yeah. Ooh, damn. Ooh, I'm sus. <laughs> sus as hell. <laughs> sus like, as hell. Cancel me listen, now. Listen, listen. Damn. We say a lot of ignorance. It's the 25% white in me. We're shit. Very, we're very educated. Woo! Okay, you know what the fuck's going on, all right? It's so, so much shit in my head. Sometimes I jumble it. All right, you know what it is. Like, it's but, like, but, it happens. Shit. Um, a lot of shit. We we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, Amendment but later. overall, like that—that's the, the that's the cusp of what yeah. Juneteenth is all about. It's basically uh, the Fourth of July for niggas, and <laughs> niggas don't know about it. Here's the funny part about this shit, right? Because a lot of people don't know about it. A lot of people had no idea what it was. So I had a party yesterday for my third, uh, my, my daughter's third uh, birthday party. Right, it was yesterday, right? She turned three and had family over, and a lot of our older family had came and. We were talking about it, and my grandmother on my my wife's side, basically, she did. She's seventy. I don't know her exact age, but she's in her upper seventies, right? Uh, she had no idea what Juneteenth was, right? Now she's a older black woman from the South. Don't know what Juneteenth is, right? My father in law didn't know about Juneteenth until. Until Monday of last week, right? Today's Sunday. We shoot on Sundays. So his expression or his 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 verbiage to me was kind of like, man, like I didn't know about this shit. Do should I should I be mad? Should I be upset? Should I be you know what should my emotion be right now that I was I was not taught I was not given this education about my history. But I know Columbus Day, right? I know Fourth of July. Why the fuck don't I know? You know, our independence. The Victor writes history. We've talked about this it's before. His story. We're probably going to continue talking about, talk they, about it. They write their accomplishments and what they want you to know, and they leave out everything else. They treated our experience and all our history like it's YouTube knowledge, which actually there is a lot of great knowledge on YouTube, as, as long as you just take into account that sometimes niggas will start talking about lizards and aliens. But... Once you, you get past that, out. you know what I'm saying? You got to, like, filter shit out. That's the problem with America. The information is all there. You just have to know how to filter it and find it. I, yeah. How do I know How do I know to look for something that I, know, that I don't but even know exists? That's the problem. So, like, <laughs> so like when it comes My to... My history. Like, I just type that in on YouTube. History. Black history on YouTube. Like, you know, the fuck is going to free up slavery. slavery. It's going to bring up slavery. It is. Yeah. I guarantee you. Because that's what they want you to know. They want you to think, like, damn, bro, I was a slave. Like, you know how, how bad that fucks with your head? Like, I don't really know where I came from. And I was a slave. Like, damn, my like, family where's must have been dumb as hell. Everyone has a different... Yeah. Alabama, Texas, Florida, Virginia. Yeah. No, motherfucker. Like, no. Because when we, when we say that to white people, they'll be like Ireland, Germany, Poland, Sweden, England. Right? I mean, all those places are not here. <laughs> so they have a whole nother historical thing that they can kind of dive into that is away from American history. That gives them sense of self. Our sense of self is chains, bondage, whipping, things like that. Like that is what <laughs> that is what our history. Hey, if you into that, you know what I'm saying. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can't stop. Oh, uh, we gotta get uh, <laughs> How I look at just Juneteenth and as history as a whole. I think I, I don't even. It's not even how I look at it. What I would say, what my opinion, and what. I would tell people to do is, is try to find out more about your history because for me to find out that a 70 year old woman and a, and a, and a, and a, and a 50 year old man don't have any knowledge about their history and that I'm somebody who's, you know, I'm 28, about to be 29, giving them that history on themselves, on, on, on their history and their elders of mine, 
it's not to say like it's like sad or anything, but I mean, it, it hurts to know that people that are older than me don't have that. They don't have that sense of knowledge. And just imagine what something like this could have been for somebody uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 years ago if they were actually celebrating it the way we are now. Yeah, like, you know, like that. It would, it would mean a whole lot more. You, do you think we would? I feel like they would have known if they, the, the the a certain sect of people weren't so busy. Burning us down and fucking chasing us out of neighborhoods and doing a whole bunch of fuck shit that they did uh-huh. after Reconstruction. That, you know, in the early 1900s, it is also admitted from history that certain people... It was a lot of black people that was in government, too, in, like, late 1800s that people don't even yes. know about. Like, that's just so, weird. We've been involved <laughs> the whole <laughs> time. We've been involved the whole time. I found a book of letters from, like, some, like, like illegitimate plantation owner's son so he was half and half mm-hmm. he taught himself to read and write and inherited a plantation in south carolina and that's like a branch of my family on my like grandma's side yeah. you know what i'm saying so like you could say it was a house nigga, but the nigga owned the plantation like, it is what it is. And he was a black plantation. Well, so, well, a lot of, like, well a lot of black people did they end up there and they end up outliving a lot of those people's it's families like people they use did. that as an excuse like well you guys own slaves to no just, ah! You guys are frustrated. Yeah, I don't even want to get into that. Look, that is so fucking dumb. That's so stupid. Our, even. They have actively oh, tried to set us back 100 years. They literally do set us back 100 years. And that is why some of the next couple things we're going to talk about is important. Because they've systematically burned us down. Mm-hmm. Prevented us from knowing things. Like, Well, let's get into that. Let's get, in, let's get into uh, 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 some stacks history. Some hobby, some hobby stacks history. Cool. All right. So today's topic we're going to address, ironically ties in with everything that's been going on recently with the uh, whole Trump and Juneteenth thing. Um, he also wanted to have his rally in Tulsa, which happens to be one of the sites of the one of the worst um, incidents of racial violence in American history. The Greenwood District of Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, which was also known as Black Wall Street, one of the wealthiest black communities in the United States. On Memorial Day, May 31st and June 1st, 1921, erupted into violence over a purported incident. They accused a, a young man of touching on or raping some white girl that worked at an elevator. She was 17, he was 19. A group of, they said, 75 black men, some of them armed, showed up to ensure that he would not be lynched. During that, there was some mobs, right? And they clashed and it erupted into violence. They said somebody fired like one shot and it erupted into violence. They flipped their shit and went on a fucking rampage through this area of town. It left like 800 injuries, like the death tolls argued 36, they say it's around 30 something deaths. Like 8,000 people were left homeless. Um, They even took their crop dusting planes and napalmed the area like it's fucking insane with them and then nobody black or white talked about it for like decades it was a, recently just put back into Oklahoma curriculum bringing it back to the present day I always find it interesting while Black Wall Street may have been the worst incident of racial violence it is definitely not the first and it definitely wasn't the last and it wasn't the only the reason why this stuff's important is because it's like an integral part of our history and it's one I think it's one of the reasons why we have been like educationally set back and stuff like that and why we would even allow Confederate monuments to be up for so long. Like because people are trying to hold on to something that's not there and they're trying to you know what I'm saying, they're trying to keep because if we really knew our contributions, our power, like our history, like and a lot more about ourselves we would realize that like we deserve, we've earned our seat at the table already. Don't let them have you thinking that we're still earning it. We've already earned our seat here and it's time that we fucking sat down at that motherfucker and kick niggas out of that shit because like we built this shit, we got the ideas, we raised our children and their children. Like we've been looking out for each other. We're a team, we need to come together. It's okay to have dialogue, it's okay to disagree. You know what I'm saying? But we need to uplift each other in every way, shape, or form. With that being said, I'm out. It's been your segment. That's all I got for you today. Look it up. Google me. You know what I'm saying? Like LeVar Burton used to say, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Don't take my word for it. You feel me? <laughs> Woo!
Woo, man. With that all being said, uh, we do appreciate y'all for coming out and enjoying another week for us, uh, with us. Um, the somebody's, you guys are always appreciated. And again, we do definitely thank you guys for um, being with us this week. Uh, I want to make sure that I end off today's episode with uh, kind of just piggybacking off of what you said. Um, go out and learn about yourself, whether you're black whether you're Middle Eastern, whether you're, uh, you know, South American, Panamanian, whatever your history is, wherever your heritage lies, learn about yourself because knowledge of self is really what can empower a person to be better in life. And that is very, very important for us, for our people. Um, we have had the plight of being oppressed and not being taught our history. And that has clearly affected us and will continue to affect us if we don't learn more about it. And we're one of the groups that we're probably the group on earth that probably is the least removed, the, the most removed from its history. So um, if you personally don't have any knowledge or you have never had any desire to have knowledge about yourself, please go out and do that um, and learn more about yourself. If you haven't learned anything today. That is probably the main crust. Learn about yourself and comprehend what you're being told. And don't be sensitive to information because there might be something that might be there that might help you uh, uh, be a lot better for yourself and maybe your family and future generations to come. So on that note, again, I'm your host that does the absolute fucking most, Mr. a Boot, Boo, Howie Stacks, um, we bid you adieu. And until next week, uh, we gonna holla at you. Peace. Uh -huh. I always felt I had a lot of wisdom. Born with common sense, I like to listen. Yeah. Trying to get an edge on competition. Throwing up a shot for the win, I won't break it. I pledge allegiance only to myself. And most of life is overcoming hands you've been dealt. It's such a soap opera as the world is always turning. Enlightened creatures keep our minds open. Fuck the fork.